guys hi how is everyone doing what is up quickly let me know if all of you guys are present here chalo sab log badhiya se hi bata dena hi hi guys hi everyone welcome to this session welcome to rocket pro and in the next 30 to 45 minutes you are going to understand the basic principles on not only how rockets work but the laws which govern them even though aircrafts as well so guys hi guys hi Give me a quick hi. I, uh, today I got a lot of complaints. Basically, ki sir, आप comments पे ध्यान नहीं देते हो. तो today I have my phone with me, so I'm gonna read everyone's comments today. I'm gonna reply to each and everyone's comment. So hi, hi guys. I could see Deepika. Hey Deepika. Hi Jyotsna. Hi Abhishek sir. Hari sir, namaste. Agrim, Sanjay, Vashish. Everyone, welcome to this session. Great, great, awesome. Hi, hello guys. Hello. Thank you. Keep learning with Sufyan. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Definitely, Prana. We're definitely going forward. Hi, Kathi Raisin. Hi, hi guys. Hi, 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 hi. So great, 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 great. Awesomely well done. Awesomely well done. That's that's pretty nice that you guys on a Sunday evening are here to learn something, and that's what we are here also to teach you guys something. Take okay. it. So now, quickly tell me how many of you guys are damn interested in rocket science, space science, astrophysics, rocket physics, everything. How many of you guys? Thank you, Arav. Thank you so much. How many of you guys are interested in that? Give me a quick. Yes, you are. Basically, that's why you guys are here for, right? Yes. Awesomely well done. Great job, guys. I could see many of you guys are interested. That's amazing. You are interested a lot. That's amazing, guys. Now, for all those students who don't know me, there is a special thing which you guys have to know. That uh, my name is Abhishek. One second. Uh, yes. I believe yes. Okay. So my name is Abhishek. Uh, I'm a master teacher at Vedantu for physics. Definitely, I handle both. Uh, you know, uh, I believe you guys know that I handle ninth and tenth standard. More than five hundred students are, you know, being mentored under me for getting that hundred percent score in uh, CPSC. But basically, I am also a very proud inventor of Rocket Pro course because I am an aerospace engineer. So I wanted all, I wanted to share my knowledge with each and every one of you out there who are interested. in these stuffs correct right. so that's why we have launched this webinar so that all of you guys can enjoy something and do something better correct right. so aaj ke liye hi start karte hain guys thank you thank you bahuli bahuli sir thank you thank you so much hey guys so let's start the rocket pro course and let's see what we're going to learn but before starting i would like to you know share you guys a very simple quote that quote is nothing but you have brains in your head you have feet in your shoes you can steer yourself in any direction you choose ठीक है कीप दैट इन योर माइंड दैट यू आर द ड्राइवर ऑफ योर व्हीकल एंड दैट व्हीकल नेम इज लाइफ यू कैन ड्राइव इट एनी वेयर यू वॉन्ट यू कैन डू एनीथिंग यू वॉन्ट सो जस्ट सेट अ गोल गाइज एंड अचीव इट दैट्स वॉट आई वॉन्ट टू हियर फ्रेवरी वन ग्रेट सो विद दैट कोड कीपिंग इन अवर माइंड लेट स्टार्ट फॉरवर्ड सो लेट इज गो फॉरवर्ड फॉर अ वेरी सिंपल क्वेश्चन लेट स्टार्ट हाउ डू यू थिंक द अर्थ लुक्स लाइक राइट नाउ कैन आई गेट सम आंसर्स कैन आई गेट सम अमेजिंग आंसर्स राइट नाउ हाउ डू यू थिंक द अर्थ लुक्स लाइक Thank you so much, Deepika, for that good quote. Thank you, Babali. Thank you, one. Thank you, Prana. Thank you so much. Quickly, sphere. It looks like sphere. Hi, Ranjana. Hello. Oval. It looks. Ha. Huh, great, Sohas. You know the answer. That's enough. That's nice. Polluted. It looks polluted, Rashmi. That's bang on, dear. Geoid. Very precisely. Geoid is a very right word. It looks oblate spheroid. That's a very good answer, Josna. Amazing. That's great, Ayush. It's sphere. Great, great, great. So many of you guys are very precise. They are telling me, sir, it's a geoid. It's an oval shape. It's oblated sphere. It's it's pretty good. All of you guys are very interesting. Click on it. So, but if I show you guys the Earth's image, all of you guys have this picture in your mind. Correct. All of you guys basically have this picture in your mind. Ki, sir, yehi hai. Yehi hai wo jahan pe hum rehte hain. This this is where we all live. Correct. No, beautiful. Correct. Blue and green. Beautiful place. Correct. Like orange round, correct. So this is where we live. Basically, that's not the truth. The answer to this question is this. This is how the Earth looks like. Basically, like a dustbin, a garbage bag, nothing apart from it. Do you see that? Exactly. This is how the Earth looks like with you know surrounded with a lot of materials. Can you even tell me that what are those materials? What are those materials right now in front of you, which you see in the screen? Yeah, exactly. Dustbin, Sandeep. space junk exactly correct all those are nothing but random satellites moving around our earth continuously 24 hours 365 days from years from centuries just going on like that so my question to all of you guys is very simple 
My question to all of you guys is here in the GIF you can see a very simple thing that this is how the earth got crowded. This is how the earth got crowded starting right from 1957 and you can see it's going on till 2013 in the GIF. Correct. So what will I do basically? I will ask you a very simple question. Why is it from 1957 only? Why did it all start from 1957? Any answers for that? Exam time, I'm going to answer that. Won't they collide or not? Exactly correct, Agrim. Very nicely done. Very nicely done. Nice. Agrim gave me the correct. Not Apollo, Abhay. It's not Apo. It's not Yuri Gagarin. Very good. The people who are telling me Sputnik, Akshat, very good. Rishikesh, very well done. Launch of Sputnik, very good, Aryan. Exactly correct. You guys are precisely correct that the launch of Sputnik, the first ever satellite in the entire world, happened on 1957. And from there on, we have been sending continuously in space a lot of things which we want. We have sent men there, we have sent animals there, we have, there is nothing else to send there. I would like to now ask everyone a very simple question. If that's so, from 1957 to 2018, it's almost how many? It's a 61 years. So my question to all of you guys is, so guys, how many satellites are now currently revolving around the Earth? Basically from 1957, to 980, so to, to 2018, there, there is 61 years of gap. So how many satellites do you think they have launched right now? Thousands. Oh, nice. Many of you guys have seen my previous webinar, so they know the answer. That's interesting. Very well done. Infinity? Okay. So let me give you a question here. This is the question. Let's play KPC right now. So here we have two options, four options, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands or lakhs. What is your answer, guys? Many? Awesome, Chihar, many. Okay, Rahul sir, 2,217. Oh, that's very precise. 4,780. Oh my God, I could see many of you guys giving correct answer. Which is the option? A, B, C, D. Which is the option, guys? A, B, C or D? What would you give me? Oh, I could see many of you guys giving me D. C also is there. A is also there. Oh, oh, oh. A, but the hundreds of work come okay, na? Nicely done, nicely done, nicely done. I could see many of you guys going for B right now. And you guys are very correct, guys. It's actually... By August 2018, by August 2018, the answer is 4,857 satellites have been launched by the entire world. 4,857 satellites. Now you all must be thinking, sir, this is a very less number. How is this a problem to us? Correct. How is this a problem? The problem is out of this 4,857 satellites only 1980 satellites are functional. Yani ke, about 50% of them are not functional. They are not doing anything for us. Only 50% of them are working. Now the again question comes, ki sir, is se kya hoga? 50% of that is not working. Let it not work. What is the issue with it? And here comes the answer to many of the students who ask me right now, sir, won't they collide with it? Won't they collide with the natural satellites which we have? Yes, obviously, look at this. How many of you guys have seen the movie Gravity? They, they, they actually showed a very interesting, you know, uh, clip, which is, you can see right now. This is the picture. This is the, you know, small part from Gravity. See, many people have seen it, right? If you've seen the movie Gravity, you know that these space junk, even though they are not functional, they keep revolving around the Earth. Because of Earth's gravitational field, they keep on revolving around the Earth. So the point is, they might any time come and hit any satellite or hit any space shuttle or hit ISS itself anytime they want. So the scientists sitting here on the ground, they have to be very careful. They keep on changing the trajectory of the functional satellites so that they don't come in the way of the space jumps. Because we cannot control the space jump, but we can control the satellites. Correct. So anytime it looks like they're going to collide. What do they do? We change the trajectory of the other satellites. We change the trajectory of the ISS. We change the trajectory of the all the other space shuttles whenever we want to. Even though you think Kisa, this is not possible. Look at this very carefully. Here is a satellite which we, you know, which as an average comes out to be $400 million of money to build, to launch. Look at that one space junk revolving around the space or revolving around the Earth just hits it up and $400 million is just boom gone gone into space so how much money we are losing for that so guys hey rishikesh gupta my question to all of you guys which is this how do we 
overcome how do we overcome the dangers of space junk this question i will leave it to you because you are the future generations you have to find out an answer i will give you 30 minutes of time by the time this session ends if you guys have any ideas about it go forward for it we'll definitely work it out i will ask this question again at the end so let's have a discussion at the end of this particular session and if you guys are not able to give me the answer we'll definitely answer that question at the end okay so keep this in mind and by that time you guys are guessing the answer also focus on the session below okay so guys with that let's get it started okay ab aage badhte hain gets let's get into the main picture today ki what are we going to learn i will start with a very simple question i want everyone to concentrate into the next slide and give me the correct answer as fast as possible the question is here on which principles of physics do you think rockets work a very simple question many of you guys might know the answer very clearly bahut badhiya aap you guys are pretty intelligent magnetic energy are kya baat hai and, and 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 you know all newton's laws very nice so let's play kvc again here is the kvc question so option a Newton's first law. Option B, Newton's second law. Option C, Newton's third law. Option D, conservation of momentum. Very bad impression of Mr. Abhijit Bachchan. I'm really sorry. Nice. Option C, third law. Newton's third law. Option D, conservation of momentum. Nice. I could see some amazing answers from all of you. You can check out the options again. Newton's first law, Newton's second law, third law, conservation of momentum, guys. Come on, come on, come on. Gravitational energy. That's interesting. Great, Aryan. You are precisely correct. all three laws oh that's interesting option c so i could see majority of you guys are actually going for option c that's pretty interesting guys that is how what i accepted to be all of them are applicable jubin ha huh, jubin sir you to know the answer all of them are applicable from jubin sir great nicely done nicely done guys let me show you guys the answer the answer to this question is nothing but all of them it's not only one of them it's actually all of them now many of you guys may be thinking sir ye kaise ho gaya how is all the three laws and conservation of momentum being applicable to the same rocket we thought it's working on third law basically because majority of you guys gave me third law only so let's try to understand right now ki how the hell it is all of them theek hai so guys all of you guys have really good imagination no all of you guys had amazing imagination give me a quick guess how many of you guys have amazing imagination like ekdam good imagination how many of you guys have it yes you have it I want everyone to answer. Give me a quick yes. Yes, you have it right. Awesomely well done. I could see everyone has really good imagination. So I want you guys to imagine that this pen right here, which you see, is the rocket. Just imagine that this pen right here is the rocket. Now the question states, how do all the three laws apply here? So now concentrate. Let us apply the law. I will tell you the statement. You guys tell me which law is it. Take okay, it. You guys tell me which law is it. So now imagine that this rocket right here is on the launching pad. Where is it? It's on the launching pad. ठीक है. Now what is going to happen? You know that the fuel inside the rocket will burn, and the fuel after burning, the gas will come out, and the gas after released, then the rocket will go up. ठीक है. Until unless the rocket's gases are released, the the fuel comes out, the combustion happens, the rocket will not go up. So that means. until and unless an external force is acting on the rocket the rocket is not going to go up my dear students which law is that first law second law third law exactly correct sandeep bang on sandeep gave the first answer right here exactly correct it is the first law very good shiv very good kaur nice avay vidyut very well done nice bagira bhavuli sir namaste bahut badhiya bahut badhiya answer uh vidhu bala very nice deepika very nice all of you guys give me the correct answer it is the first law of motion theek hai to ab samajh mein aa gaya ki newton's first law kaise apply kiya ab chalte hain to the third law scenario for the third law scenario let me take you guys to a different picture here theek hai now i want everyone to concentrate ab dekho i will make a very beautiful rocket here is a very beautiful rocket i'm really sorry if you don't find it beautiful but this is a very beautiful rocket according to me theek hai and you have gas is coming out okay that's the gas is that's the fire impression yeah see that okay now i'll ask you a very simple question guys a very simple question fuel inside the rocket will burn correct so when they burn they decompose or they combust into smaller particles 
यानी कि दे वुड बी अ सॉलिड फ्यूल दे विल बी अ लिक्विड फ्यूल दे कुड बी गैसेस फ्यूल एनीथिंग बट आफ्टर दे बर्न दे विल रिड्यूस डाउन इनटू स्मॉल पार्टिकल्स माय क्वेश्चन टू ऑल ऑफ यू गाइस इज डू दिस पार्टिकल्स हैव सम मास यस ऑन डू दिस पार्टिकल्स हैव सम मास यस वेरी गुड रश्मि डेफिनेटली हैव करेक्ट दे हैव सम मास यस अमेजिंग अमेजिंग सो दे हैव सम मास नाउ वंस दे हैव बर्न all these particles will with masses they come out of the rocket with very high velocity that also we have seen whenever we see a rocket launch we see that this smoke particularly comes out of the rocket with a very high velocity so we can say that these particles have some acceleration also these mass have some acceleration also yeah amazing my dear students here you have the formula of some law which law is that first law second law third law which law is that exactly correct guys very well done exactly it comes out to be second law that is f is equal to ma very nicely done so now you know how is second law also being applied on to a rocket that is it's actually working on second law ki matlab the the thrust comes out with an acceleration due to which the rocket goes up now the question comes a very interesting thing i would like to share a very interesting story to all of you guys i'll tell you what happened in my college life theek hai when i was studying aerospace even my uh, friends had a very interesting thought or an idea let me know how many of you guys have the same idea about a rocket theek hai so think and tell me so guys imagine you have a rocket the thrust comes out the thrust comes out it hits the ground then comes back and then takes the rocket up how many of you guys believe this how many of you guys believe this like the thrust comes out it goes and hits on the ground and then comes back and takes the rocket up how many of you guys believe this how many of you guys don't believe this acha maybe i could see many of you guys believe and many of you guys don't believe okay no yes me me i do you believe okay so for all the students who don't believe this congratulations you are on the right track but for all the students who believe this my question to you is very simple to theek hai to when the rocket is on the ground then this principle works out so i'm very happy but imagine that the rocket is in space when the rocket is in space still the rocket moves forward there i don't have any ground there i don't have anything to reflect these thrust back so then how is my rocket moving how is my rocket moving then what is your answer true right like something to think about no exactly correct so the point here is guys ki the entire thing which i just explained one of my friend story it's a misconception a lot of the people who are even studying in aerospace they have this misconception so if you guys have it's generally normal i also believe used to believe the same thing so it's it's completely a wrong miss a wrong thinking guys so now from the wrong thinking let get into the right thinking so what actually happens see basically if i ask you a very simple question all this fuel which i uh, told you right now comes out with a acceleration so this has mass and it has acceleration that means it has some amount of force correct so now quickly tell me guys this force of the gases are act, are acting downward or is it acting upward the force with which the thrust comes out is it acting downward or is it acting upward come on the thrust is acting downward or upward exactly correct it's acting downward for obvious reasons no the part the thrust is coming out downward obviously it cannot go up so it's coming out downward so now considering that this thrust here this thrust here which we are calling it as the smoke or the fire is equal to something called as an action this thrust is nothing but an action so now my dear students you know newton's third law of motion which states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction so according to newton's third law due to this thrust coming out of the rocket downward there will be a reaction on the rocket which is acting upward on the rocket which is acting upward and that we will call act as reaction got my point correct 
Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. The action is the thrust coming out of the rocket. The reaction is the rocket going upward. And that's how guys you apply Newton's third law also into the picture. So now we applied all the laws. So I believe now you guys have no misconception regarding the rockets. Correct. So in this case, Alia, very well done. Congratulations. Yeah, baat hai. Perfect. Dimagh mein gaya. Congratulations, guys. So now I'll give you a very simple statement. Now I'll give you a very simple statement. The question is this, guys. What is that? What is that? What is that right there? What is that right there? Quickly tell me. What is that? Missile? No, no. I don't want the entire name. I just want that. What is that part name? Just tell me that. What is that part name? Oh, nice. I could see Amrut knows the answer. I could see, uh, you know, many of you guys. Many, like many of you guys. I can still see they're telling me wings. Day, day, day. It's not wings. Propellers, flaps, fins, wings. Red color. <laughs> I know it is red color. But what is that thing there? Exactly. Very nice. Red R it is. Flaps it is. Very nice, guys. Bahubali sir, very good. I could see Soham also giving the correct answer. Very good. Balaji sir, very nice. Okay. Nicely done, guys. Nice few lines. So they are not wings. Rockets do not contain wings. Rockets contain fins. Wings are in the aircrafts. Rockets don't have wings. They have fins. Now, as all of you guys know, that wings are there in the aircraft to produce that lift. so that the aircraft can go up and take off and land does the fins do the same thing in the case of a rocket does the fins do the same thing in terms of a rocket do they take the rocket from bottom to top no they don't correct no they don't they don't do that because the rockets go up because of the engine because of not because of the fins so the question to all of you guys is this then why do we have fins at all is it due to static stability dynamic stability rational rotational stability or show off and let's see show off clearly so what would be your answer guys it provides direction shift that's a very good answer shift that's a very good answer so i have i have given you four options guys what do you think static stability dynamic stability rotational shift stability or it is show off now many of you guys might not know ki sir ye stability kya hota hai correct na many of you guys not know ki sir stability kya hota hai So what do I do? Uh, what do I do? Show off? Huh? <laughs> I could see many of you guys are telling me show off, and many of you guys are telling me sir for all of these. Acha. Now let me let me let, let's focus here. Let's focus here for one moment. Let's focus here for one moment, guys. Now concentrate. I will show you the action. You try to identify what does it mean. I will show you static stability. I will show you dynamic stability. I will show you rotational stability. I'll also show you showing off. So you think and tell me what is it. rocket static stability that is static stability i am not going to say anything think it up guess it up static stability number 2 dynamic stability what does it dynamic stability mean that's dynamic stability i don't know whether it's making sense to all of you सोचो अच्छे से सोचो नंबर थ्री रोटेशनल स्टेबिलिटी नंबर फोर शोइंग ऑफ आई डोंट नो हाउ टू शो दैट लेकिन आई बिलीव यू गैस अबाउट दी आंसर राइट नाउ सो गैस नाउ टेल मी व्हाट इज द करेक्ट आंसर ए बी सी और डी या लुक एट दैट लुक एट दैट नाउ आई कुड सी दैट द आंसर है to option c that is rotational motion congratulations guys you have become a pro in now rocketry congratulations very well done it's rotational stability you see what happens you see what happens whenever the rocket moves up no whenever the rocket moves up if i if i take a very small example if i take a very small example let me take the example of cricket how many of you guys play cricket here how many of you guys play cricket you make quick yes ki sir main cricket khelta how many of you guys play cricket I know. Arey, look at that answers, man. Option C, option C. Come on, come on, come on. Yes. Oh, I could see amazingly many of you guys play cricket. So even if you don't play cricket, I would, I like, I am gonna assume that you guys know something called as what is called what is known as spin. 
what is spinning a ball the bowlers spin a ball correct so many of you guys not know what is spin also i'm really sorry about that but you have to know its general knowledge it's spinning correct you spin a, a baller spins a ball there are spin ballers correct so great job guys amazingly well done theek hai to many of you guys might be spin ballers good job now i will tell you the now this bowlers have studied aerodynamics every bowler have to understand aerodynamics to actually spin a ball now understand how theek hai now so I, you must have seen uh, the spin bowlers throwing a ball they always throw the ball you know in an action correct so they throw the ball in an action so that what happens the ball when it moves the ball when it moves it slightly rotates it slightly rotates whenever the bowler throws the ball it slightly rotates during this rotation what happens there is a pressure there is a pressure difference created i'll i'll explain it to you don't worry don't worry there is a pressure difference created so when this bowlers bo spin the ball they throw the ball they launch the ball from their hands there is a small pressure difference created where on top of the ball and underneath the ball small pressure difference created on top of the ball and underneath the ball due to that spinning of their hands what does that happen imagine on top of the ball there will be more amount of air and at the bottom of the ball there will be less amount of air high amount of air less amount of air kyunki because there is a pressure difference so what happens ki yahan pe pressure is too high and yahan pe pressure is too less my question to all of you guys now why is this pressure less and pressure high because of the spin of the baller that to matlab aise jab ball gaya the air circulated around the ball in a manner ki on top of the ball there is high pressure and on bottom of the ball there is low pressure my question to all of you guys is from where to where now the air will move from high pressure to low pressure or low pressure to high pressure yes exactly correct be the master in your banali equation exactly correct but will not go down that exactly guys yes sundani i am repeating the same thing exactly so high to low exactly correct guys you are bang on it's high pressure to low pressure very nicely done air always moves from high pressure to low pressure guys congratulations so here what will happen ki the air will start moving from high pressure and it will go to low pressure from high pressure to low pressure that is from top to the bottom the air will start moving and when the air is moving from top to bottom it will also rotate the ball with itself understand this imagine this when the air travels from top to bottom it will rotate the ball also with it hence leading it for a proper fast spin of the ball and this every bowler knows and that's how they spin the same thing happens to a rocket when a rocket is launched when a rocket is launched due to difference in air pressure all around the atmosphere the rocket starts rotating so you might be thinking let it rotate sir what is going what is bad going to happen the problem is guys the rocket has a specific fuel consumption it has a specific fuel consumption it is all calculated if i give it give you 100 liters of petrol or 100 liters of any fuel you have to use the entire fuel correct but that does not happen when the rocket is rotating when the rocket is rotating that does not happen kyunki or rotate only will say it slows down a bit due to drag due to friction everything it slows down a bit there is where your fin comes into the picture there is where your fin comes into the picture as you can see the fins are always placed in a rocket at equal distances due to this what happens when the air flow happens the fins you know distribute the air equally on all the sides making it amazingly proper for the rocket to go straight up straight up it's giving its directional stability it's also giving it the rotational stability very properly it's just going straight it's not rotating much it's straight saving a lot of money for us because it's all about the money correct so i hope you guys got that particular point also very nicely guys then very nice to us congratulations ek or part you have got it right now regarding rocketry now before going to the next part i would like to show you guys a very interesting thing uh, that is nothing but this scenario 
So basically guys, uh, we are launching a course as you can see right now, which is nothing but Rocket Pro course. I believe the students who attended the Friday's webinar, they again saw this particular course, correct? And many of you guys have joined the course. It's amazing to see that how the new generation is actually very much interested in rockets and space. I'm really happy to say that that uh, because of this demand generated from you guys only, we were able to launch this course again. So thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. A uh, huge thank you to, you know, to all of you from my side. Okay. So basically we are launching a course on Rocket Pro, learn it, build it, launch it. It is the only online certified course in India or you can say in the world where you going to get certificates for building your own rockets building your own aircrafts by understanding their technical and practical aspects everything i'll also teach you how to launch them and you can actually watch all those videos on youtube we have put that as well but the best surprise here is for all the webinar attendees alone for this session attendees alone we have got a special price for all of you guys that's exactly 799 rupees the actual price goes up to 999 rupees but especially for all of you guys where it is down into 799 so guys here is the link right now for all of you guys to join this course it's just a 10 hour course where 5 hours are dedicated for rockets and rest 5 hours are dedicated for aircrafts where you learn the technical aspects how to make the rocket we'll make it ourselves then we'll launch it also and all those videos will be put on youtube from our side and at the end of the day you will get participation certificates as well as merit certificates also all the winners will be getting merit certificates Winners as in the best designs made by these students and the previous designs were completely superbly amazing. So I'm just hoping this time also it comes out well. It's only for one hour every day, two sessions per week. That's it guys. I believe all of you guys have noted. So the link has been put down into your YouTube chat also. So I'll be waiting for all of you guys to join it. It's vdnt.in slash rocketry 799. Moving forward to the next very interesting question. How many of you guys are well aware of the concept center of gravity? How many of you guys are well aware of the concept center of gravity? Give me a quick yes or no. Okay. Okay. Yes, you are. Okay. Nice. Nice. People who don't know about center of gravity. Wait, on Friday also I did something amazing. Let me do that again. Okay. Here I have a very interesting uh, concept which I would like to show. Look at this very carefully guys. Take care. Here I have a book and many of you guys might have done this in your schools and everywhere uh, using a football, a basketball or something of that sort, correct? No. So what has happened to you? You will balance the uh, you know book in your fingers and you will start rotating it, correct? So when you start rotating it, you will like you are going to show off to all the girls out there. You do, do, you do that. Show off to your friends, correct? You do that. You do that with your basketballs, you do that with your footballs, volleyballs, some kind of balls, you keep on doing it, correct? So how are you able to do that? See, people are telling me, I do, sir, I do. People are telling me, I do, sir. So my question to all of you guys is, how are you able to do that? What is that special thing about that particular point which makes it happen? Because if I keep it at any other point, the book is definitely going to fall off. But exactly at that central point of that book, we are able to balance. My question to all of you guys is, how is that possible? If you look at it very carefully, it's balanced. Oh, I'm good at this. So my question to you guys is, how is that able to balance? Centroid, COG, exactly correct. Because that point of the textbook is the center of gravity of that textbook. Now, what is center of gravity? Center of gravity is that point where the entire weight of the object is perfectly balanced. That means if I take that book, I will keep, I will find out the center of gravity. And at the exact point of gravity, I'll cut the textbook. I will get two parts. Both the parts will weigh the same amount. So if the book is 10 kg, when I cut it to the center of gravity, two parts, 5 kg, 5 kg each. So the weight is perfectly balanced. That's the reason why the, the book also balances. Also, center of gravity is the point of rotation. Each and every object in the entire universe rotates about its center of gravity. Rotates about. And that's why it also rotates properly at the center of gravity. So my question to all of you guys is when I talk about an aircraft, the center of gravity, we always try to keep it at the center. Take it for an aircraft. We try to keep the center of gravity at the center. What will I do? Uh, I, I can, you know, so that the aircraft can move up, can move down, can go straight, turn left, 
turn right, it can take a diagonal turn, it can take any kind of a turn, so because of which the center of gravity is at the center. The real question is, if that's the case, then what is the scenario for a rocket? Where should be the center of gravity be placed in case of a rocket, my dear students? Give me the answer. Come on, quickly give me the answer. Is it option A, option B, option C or option D? What do you think? Towards the top, towards the bottom, at the center or none of these? Oh, I could see one person telling, Rashmi telling me none of these. I could see many of you guys going for option C. Uh, many of you guys going for option B also. That's very nice. That's very nice, guys. Congratulations, you guys are doing great. Amazingly great. Bahut badia. Oh, I could see one person telling me A also. Pranav, Pranav telling me A. Nice. Towards the bottom. Okay, okay, okay. That's amazing, guys. Look at that spirit all of you guys have got. Great job, guys. Great. Nicely done. The correct answer, although, the correct answer, although, comes out to be, let us find it out. Instead of te me telling you the answer, let us find out ki what is the answer. I would like all of you guys to concentrate here. Bas do minute me concentrate karo, you will know the answer. Okay. So let's start with the bottom. Here is my rocket again. If I keep the center of gravity at the bottom, I will hold the pen exactly there. Okay. So the center of gravity is here. That means my rocket can rotate about this particular point. None of the other points, but this particular point. So imagine the rocket is going up. Lot of amount of air is coming through it because when the rocket goes, you can feel that air coming, right? So what will happen due to this pressure difference? The rocket will start wobbling. The rocket will start wobbling. My question to all of you guys is, is this what you guys need? Do you want your rocket to wobble? I'm, I believe that you, all of you guys will say, no, sir, we don't want our rocket to wobble because this is rocket. It, it is not a angry bird game, correct? The rocket should not just go there. That should not happen. It's not an angry bird game, it's a rocket. Correct. So now the question comes, ki what will happen if I keep it at the center? That's a good guess. So if I keep it at the center, it's pretty obvious ki the wobbling would be less, but it's not too less. Get my point? It's not too less. It still rotates much. Now the concept is finally going up to towards the top. When I keep it towards the top, doesn't matter if it is air, if it is a hurricane, if it is something, my rocket is not gonna move. It's gonna stay like there, like it's not gonna move. So here is where the thinking comes in. Here is where the scientist inside you should get up and ask, oh damn, this is what happens in a rocket? Yes, the center of gravity of a rocket is always kept towards the top, my dear students, towards the top. And that is the answer to that question. <sighs> and that's it for today also. We are gonna say thank you to everyone. Here is my email ID through which you can ask me any questions related to rockets. Please note it down. And I believe all of you guys have noted down the link for the rocket course also. The rocket course link will be put down into your chat right now again. Now let's move forward and give me the answer for the first question with which we started guys, with which we started. What is the scenario of space junk? Let me read the answer. Let me give it to you. Yes, space junk questions, Mithil. Tell me. Karthik? Haan, arigato, Karthik. Rashmi? Yes. No problem, Phoenix. No problem. So guys, I believe, uh, yes, the link is now put into YouTube chat again. You can just check it out. You can click on the link and find it out. Let me know if you guys are joining. Send me an email if you have joined the course and if you have any doubts related to, to rockets, send me an email as well. I have plenty of emails already got from all of you guys still to answer. I'm still answering because there are too many emails, but definitely answer that. Yes. So strong laser, send a cleaning machine. What kind of a cleaning machine you think? We can send one more satellite to attack, attract the junk. What will you do by attracting the junk Phoenix? Call Thor. <laughs> Calling Thor is an amazing answer, guys. Calling Thor is an amazing answer. It can be destroyed by using missiles. Mm, that's a very nice answer. That's a very nice answer. That's, that's, that, that can be done. Uh, cleaning nets, recycle it, interception device, oh, 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 oh. electromagnet, Thor is the best answer, <laughs> Superman, <laughs> very good answer, by snagging and moving the junk, mm, Smithil, yeah, that we can do, they will get destroyed automatically, how Bahubali, how, by sending missiles and destroying them, if a rocket catches fire, part with the destroyed first, oh, 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 oh. Hmm. by throwing away from the earth, okay, Interesting. 
let's do let me let me let me give you guys one suggestion okay let me give you guys one suggestion uh what do you guys think if we talk about a meteorite correct no when we talk about a meteorite guys you know that uh, when meteorites come towards the earth they burn off due to the atmosphere yes or no you guys know the answer correct no whenever meteorite comes uh, towards the earth they burn off correct yes or no you guys know what is a meteorite right you know shooting stars everyone knows what's a meteorite so you guys are amazing correct ha huh, exactly correct shamja now you are going get the shampa yes yeah, shampa ja you are getting correct answer now exactly correct no so let's do one thing anyways we cannot reuse it kyunki since they the junk has been there for a long time in space they must have been affected with radiation so it's pretty risky to get them back so what do we do we'll send a device obviously we'll capture the junk and pull it down towards the atmosphere this is called as the spider man effect <laughs> so when we pull it down towards the atmosphere what happens the satellites the junk starts burning due to the atmosphere and by the time it reaches the earth it's ashes so that's that could be a pretty interesting one right right rashmi oh rashmi yeah you got it right it will be burned exactly yes suhas your answer was almost right exactly correct rupali friction or we also call it as uh, you know friction air friction actually nice it it does not kartik you really think so it does not it does kartik it definitely does kartik uh use electrodynamic tethers mm done reduce reuse recycle see minakshi great job we can also turn directions oh, can be done if we burn it can be harmful uh smithal why do you think it would be harmful it would not be harmful because see one every day at least one person in the entire world sees a shooting star correct now what is a shooting star a shooting star is nothing but a meteorite that is not harmful how could be a satellite meteor correct think no no the see pollution is not the correct answer <laughs> because it's not about pollution ashes are not pollution correct great why we are using hydrogen liquid for space uh, sri 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 ranjivi because it's very cheap uh, and it's one of the best uh propellers or propellants we have that's why use a harpoon mm, hyper game it will destroy the earth yo yo ajit i don't think so how about free orbiting space station there is no earth near there free orbiting space station but why will you invest so much money there rahul why will you invest so much money to build a free moving earth space station why will you sir so, ananya okay okay smithal your ananya ananya hi <laughs> how could you pull it back Hmm. Uh, I will give you a suggestion. I'll give you a small link. The link is nothing but uh, just go on to and search about ESA. ESA is nothing but European Space Agency. They are actually working on this uh, space junk problem and using the same method. ठीक है? So check it out. Let me know if you guys want it out. Okay, guys. So with that, we will end the session for today. ठीक है? With that, we'll end the session for today. it was fun guys you guys are simply amazing i love this session i love the energy which you guys had really thank you for all of you guys for joining this session let me know if you guys are joining send me an email okay no god try don't play pubg <laughs> bye bye guys we'll see you guys soon for cbc 9th and 10th standard master classes or rocket pro again bye bye guys good night take care until the next time this is abhishek enjoy your life bye